Hi guys, my name is Darrell Addison. I am the founder and the president of Torpedo Pot. I am also the founder and president of Canapot, C-A-N-A hyphen P-O-T dot com. And I'm also the founder and the uh, president of uh, Agricultural Blockchain, where people can exchange their goods nationwide. What I want to do is introduce you how to, to show you how the timer works when you're setting up your torpedo pot. Your torpedo pot comes with a timer. The timer is based on, has three main parts to it. One is the bottom nipple. The other is the swivel head adapter. And then we have the timer itself. The timer can be broken down. When you remove this and turn it, take it off, you'll have access to a filter in your timer. Where that you can actually, the filter is there to be able to filter out all the particulates that are in your watering system. Because if you have a lot of debris coming into your watering system, it will clog it up. That's why we highly recommend a filter. We're also developing pre-filters before, but we'll talk about that at a later time. So when you get your timer, all of this will be assembled, pre-assembled automatically. So all you would have to do only is to take your hose, plug it up to the base of the timer, and you come with a pair of shears also, we can cut the timer, and you would take that and plug it into the base of your um, torpedo pot. So <clears throat> water would come from the spigot through the timer into the back portion of the torpedo pot, okay? So, in this case, this individual will have a spigot coming out, with water coming out of that spigot. All it would do is hook up the swivel head adapter to that spigot, and water will follow itself on through. Now, <clears throat> if you're having problems with your timer, a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. First thing I want you to check is your batteries. It's very important to check the batteries inside of your timer rather be this one or the round timer. The battery compartment for this gray timer could be just pulled out and you'll access the battery compartment there and from there you're able to add your AAA batteries. You can get it working. From the additional timer what we do is that the battery compartment is inside the uh, timer itself. You pull the battery compartment out and you're able to put your battery in and get it working. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stick batteries in this compartment to get it um, to where we want it to, uh, how we can, so we can use it. I'm going to put this in right now, and I'm going to stick this in back into. Be careful not to shove it in and break the wires, okay? Can you see those wires right there? So be careful not to shove it in, but you want to be able to take those wires, push it back inside the uh, compartment safely. With that, you can close it safely. Reset it, have it on off right now. Now I'm going to turn it. Once I turn this timer to on, it made a click. And that is the valve opening and closing to shut it off and on. Now let's do it for the gray timer. <coughs> Same thing. We're going to pull it out and we're going to put the batteries inside the gray timer. Can you uh, see that up close? And all we're doing is put the battery in the timer. Get this other battery inside. Hear that noise? That's the timer working automatically. Now, it's very important that you use fresh batteries. If you do not use fresh batteries with your timer, alkaline batteries, then you will not get effective results. You cannot use used batteries in your timer. It has to feel that energy going through it to kick it in. So right now I have my timer off. When every time you make a change in your timer on and off, you should hear some noises. So I'm gonna cut it on now. You hear that? That's the timer opening up when it's on to allowing water to go through. I'm going to turn this timer back to one minute. So I'm going to turn it back one minute and I'm going to do it for about one hour. Now how it waters is this. I set it for one minute and one hour. That doesn't mean your timer is going to come on immediately. What it means is that within an hour it's going to water for one minute. So you're going to need an hour for the, so every hour after that, since your setting is going to start watering. Likewise with the green timer, every time that you set your timer, in this case for how often, which is every one hour, and how long, in this case one minute, then it will cut on automatically. In one hour, it will water for one minute. 
There's a couple of things I want you to understand. Sometimes people, they drop their timer. I had a gentleman who left his shield off his timer and it got wet. What's so foolproof about the torpedo pod is this. You don't necessarily have to use the timer. The torpedo pod has its own built-in water circulation unit in the planter itself. So basically, all you need to do is tie this up to a spigot. Once you get screwed onto a spigot with this particular timer right here, then what you can do is that you can water whatever you want. So all you have to do is plug this up. I'm trying to turn it right now into this spigot. Let's see if I can get it working right. Ah, oh, there you go. And when it comes out, all you do is turn a knob. What I normally do is I put the knob on a trickle, just a trickle. It'll trickle the water out so until you're able to get a timer. Now, how the whole system is connected is that these timers sends water to pots throughout your system. What it does, it cuts on and off the water as you would like. <clears throat> but like I said, you don't have to go that route. If you feel like you want to plug it directly to your spigot and plug it on, you can do that with the timer itself. Sharon, is there any questions that I might have missed out that you think you might want to ask about this? Can you describe for us the several different configurations depending on what timer you have and whether or not you include it a hose? So, that's a good question. <clears throat> the timer configurations, I get a lot of people reaching out to me and saying, Mr. Addison, it's hot in my area. I mean, how frequently should I water my seeds? Or, Mr. Addison, it's, I just broke the winter time, so it's not a lot of growing taking place. The plants aren't absorbing a lot of water. So how do I configure and set up my planter? You know, I use this as a basic rule when, I, when individuals share this information with me. I use this as a basic rule that when you have your timer, one of the things that you should always monitor, and that is the bottom of your pot. Your planters are designed to allow water to pass right on through, okay? So if you see a lot of water at the bottom of your planter, then you know you're giving your plants too much water. The timer helps you control that by cutting it on and off. But for a lot of seeds, they don't uh, really require a lot of water. Once they're buried into the soil and microbial uh, organisms are alive and they start kicking in, they will actually start germinating your seed for you. You don't need to have a lot of water. It's more about the environment that allows that kernel to, to, to soften so that the life in it can, can, can actually come and pull itself out of it. So that's what the, the water plays in it. But the actual kernel itself or the seed itself is actually, when that kernel is delivered, it provides its own fungal environment and it grows by itself. So you don't need a lot of water. So when I have a lot of seeds in my planter, I normally do it, uh, I would say I put about, um, cut it off for about one minute every, I would say every three, four hours. As your plants are young, they still don't use a lot of water. So for these plants you see here, we have them running for one minute every two to three hours. And they are doing just fine. As a matter of fact, we had a lot more plants in here. I thinned them out as they started to get older, so we don't, we don't have to water them as much. But when you have a lot of plants and they're sucking up a lot of water and they require a nice biotic environment so they can grow, then you want to water a little bit more frequently. I have this plant I'm watering every three hours for about one minute, okay? And I'm doing the seeds, I know I'm wasting water with the seeds, but the plants, they're sucking that water up. All I want to do is keep this nice and wet. And it, like I said, early in the season, keep it wet. You can run it every six hours for one minute. You can do that with your timer. But for those that require a lot more water, you're going to, um, to have to turn up your timer so that they can actually um, to absorb that water. Yes, update the water. So if you don't have a timer, mm -hmm. how best to adjust it when it's coming right from the hose when it's coming right from the hose remember now torpedo pot does not i mean from the faucet from the faucet the torpedo pot uh does not pour water into your planter so it's not like you have an open faucet where all the water is shooting out and filling this torpedo pot no 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 when the water comes in your quarter inch hose and it comes out inside of your torpedo pot what it does is that it releases the water to not destroy the soil matrix. So you're getting water inside of it, but the way that water is being distributed and the way it's being released, is not like it is in the ground. We have a lot of water coming, creating crevices in the soil, wiping out the fungal colonies. It does a lot of damage. So Pedal Pot releases it in a very nice, efficient way. So when you turn this knob, 
you don't have to worry about a lot of water coming through your planter. All you're doing is slowly allowing that environment to develop and build itself up. And so that water is released itself in a very, very uniform way. Did that answer your question, sir? Any more questions? Yeah, I have one more question. Suppose I have on the same line mm -hmm. seeds okay. and then a large plant. Okay. And I want that to ha not have so much water, but I want the plant to have a little bit more water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you suggest I handle that? That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked that question. These are, this is dill and fennel. <clears throat> Clearly it's different from tomatoes. The water requirements for the fill and dental, uh, um, the, the, um, <laughs> the uh, dill and the fennel is less than it would be for these beautiful tomatoes. Now these two beautiful tomatoes were started from seeds. I just simply threw my seeds in and I put over 20 seeds to 30 seeds in there, but I cut them back. And the deal, I got these from seedlings. So I put them inside the planter. Now I know that these tomatoes at some point are going to use more water than the deal. They're very aggressive. The root system is very aggressive and they require a lot of water because they're, they're doing a lot of fruiting. There's not that much fruiting taking place in your dill and your, uh, and your fennel, but they are absolutely stunning. And the dill and fennel, have these little small shoots on them, which you probably never tasted before in your life. And it's highly nutritious. It's an award-winning piece of the plant that you want, that you're guaranteed nutrition. So the question is, how do I maintain nutrition in both plants? Well, <clears throat> from your timer, <clears throat> when a hose goes into your torpedo pot and it goes into both of these planters, the pressure is the same. So the pressure coming out of your house Inside to the line that is feeding this pot and that pot is the same, okay? Now the question is, the pressure is the same, but when you go to the knob and turn it and release it, how it releases itself is going to be different from one to another. So I can control the growth of this plant by turning that knob. If this requires a lot more, I'm going to have this knob turn up a lot higher than I would this deal. See, if I gave the dill all the water that I gave the tomatoes, it would flood the dill, not flood the pot. What it would do is that you're creating a lot of anaerobic cases of bacteria that can, that, that, that can destroy your plant. You're creating a lot more moisture than it needs, which would then cause your plants to rot in the root system. And you don't want that. So the knobs, as you begin to turn the knobs in a torpedo pot, you can create the atmosphere that you want. Is that, did I ask you a question, sir? Yes. Any more questions or? No, that's it. Okay. So when you get your, your timer, mm -hmm. what I want you to do, first of all, put your battery in. Do not, please, do not use used batteries, okay? Put new batteries in. Once you put your new batteries in, have it, put a reset, turn it to off on this green timer. And for the gray timer, it has the reset also. And we're going to turn it to off, okay? Now what I do is I normally test my timer, uh, my timers because I turn it to on and what I want to do I want to see here clicking on I want to make sure that it's working and water is coming through it now you must have fresh new batteries okay these timers are designed we got them because these timers are easy for you to use it doesn't require a lot of programming and it won't confuse a lot of people all you have to do is open it up put your batteries in and turn it to the desired setting and I want you to be able to do that. Again, if you find out there's problems with your timer, always check. First of all, to make sure the water is cut off at the source, but take a look at your filter and make sure it's not clogged, number one. And number two, make sure your batteries, the light is on. If you see that red light, that means your batteries are going low. Check, replace your batteries, okay? Because this timer is running for you, it's cutting on and off multiple times a day. All right, so make sure you check your batteries, make sure the batteries are working correctly. Uh, to what you want to do. Yes, yeah, Sharon, you say something now? How long would you expect the batteries to last in the timers? That's another good question. For the uh, green timers, what we found out, see, the reason why you don't hear a lot of mechanisms in the green as you do in the gray. The gray you hear turning, the valves open, yeah, yeah, you can actually listen to it. The green, all you hear is the click, okay? Which means that the green uses probably less energy than the gray does. However, both timers I've been able to take the gray and the green and the gray and they've been batteries have lasted me um, throughout the uh, throughout the season okay 
And so I haven't had a problem replacing them. Maybe one or two units I replace the batteries in, but they're constantly working and they're doing the job that they need to do. But one of the things I want to remind you is that even, and this is outside of the timers, even though the timers are on and they're working, always walk up to your pot, look at the health of your plant, and look at the water that's being released to your plant and ask yourself, am I giving my plant the right amount of water? The top surface of this planter is, 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 is so dry, it's ridiculous. It's so brittle and dry that it can blow away in the wind. But remember now, we're not trying to feed that anyhow. We're not trying to give that water. Because the plant, the reason why it looks so healthy and so beautiful, because it's getting its water inside the surface, under the surface of the torpedo pot. We've eliminated all the bacteria at the top because of the watering techniques that we use to feed it. So I don't want you to be amazed, dismayed and say, oh my God, my camera went, my torpedo pot, my plants are gonna die. No, take your torpedo pot, hook it up to your nearest faucet. Don't worry about it. And control it with your knob here. And it should do the exact same thing. Our goal is that um, the most important um, person in our whole supply chain is you. Um, I will go out of my way to make sure that you're well taken care of because you are my customer. All of my customers get my highest, highest attention and they are my number one priority. And I want to let you know that's how I run my business. If I cannot get back in contact with you, is a reason, but I will, within all of my power, make sure that I address your concerns, either by designing a better design for our other products and services, or whatever we decide to do, we're gonna do it. Also, I wanna raise to you a question is that, we are now, we are now trying to, um, to partner up with a lot of businesses such as yours. So, Feel free to send me ideas of how your business can connect with the Torpedo Pot so that we can grow together. Darrell Addison, food is the new gold, and those who have it will prosper, and those who don't will not. Eat healthy, be healthy, and we thank you for your time. Darrell Addison, TorpedoPot.com, thank you again. Bye-bye.